What's up, y'all, and welcome to Durag Thoughts. My name is Trevor Went. I'm a visual artist raised in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I make art to challenge perspectives and give hope to the marginalized and oppressed. In this space, Durag Thoughts is a space where we do just that. We talk about concepts and ideas and, and different things that do, like I said, just that, empower marginalized and oppressed peoples, giving hope to marginalized and oppressed peoples. And we're in season two of Durag Thoughts, and we're, walk we're rocking through my project, uh, City of God. And Today, uh, I want to talk to y'all a little bit about building a vision. And so it's for today. My guest for today is a senior software engineer, is also an audiophile, um, has taught me much of everything that I know about music, um, is a coffee aficionado, um, knows all there is to know in comparison to me um, about you know, all the different beverages, um, you know, beer, uh, bourbon, whiskey, wine has, has a way better taste palette in those different spaces than I do. Um, as a, as a wrestling fan, as a, a boxing fan, just, just a man of, of much culture and, uh, a man of, of many different talents and spaces of interest. And is also someone that I am uh, blessed to call my older brother. And that is Aaron Went. So appreciate you taking some time to be here today, bro. Nah, no problem at all. You know, what's up, y'all? Hey, nah, yeah, you're too kind, man. Yeah, nah, I appreciate you. So um, I want to I want to rock off this conversation off top with one of the things that stood out to me for a long time. So you know, for for people who don't know, I started. Um, photography in college. I didn't start photography as a little kid. Um, I didn't find it till late. And it was it was kind of a byproduct of what wasn't available at my school. Um, and I remember I was talking with you, Aaron, about um, just my art and my processes. And I was I was showing you different stuff. And I don't remember like what specifically the project was. But you said to me, I just feel like there's not really a lot of nuance <laughs> with your stuff. <laughs> oh man. I just, I straight out said that. Yeah. I don't I mean, remember that. Like we were talking about like, cause I, I, I don't know if it was like, I was talking about a project specifically, but mm -hmm. I just remember like you, you being like, yo, I just feel like you need more nuance. Like, it's just not, it's not there. Like it was, it was just like, I was, I was sitting there like having a bunch of stuff that was just mad straightforward. Like mm. all my work was just like in front of your face. This is the oh, message yeah. I want you to hear. This is the thing that I'm trying to tell you about. And a lot of my work off top was like, it was a bunch of stuff that was like faith-based and things like that. And not that my work doesn't have a bunch of faith-based elements right now, but it was very much so in a space where it was like, and here's the book of John. And then you look at it. it there, there, there wasn't really a whole lot of depth to what I was creating. And so you had said to me, you know, I just I just think that you don't have a whole lot of nuance with what you're doing. Like, I think you need <laughs> some more nuance. And I and it like. You know, I, I mean, I, I absolutely value your your opinion in and especially in the space of art, um, you know, for for y'all to have like some sort of bigger glimpse, like when it comes to COG, um, Aaron has, has been like probably the biggest behind the scenes person in terms of vision, um, in terms of developing the project artistically um, in depth and like rocking through like and spitballing how to expand the vision of the record um to expand the vision of the project as a whole and to make it um you know a larger scale in in terms of like what it was talking about and so for me i i just i just really had to like take a look at my art and be like okay so like where am i like why is why like why am i still putting out stuff that's just like hi it's up in front of your face but there wasn't like layers to it and i'm a layered person like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i i have so many aspects of myself that like don't come off up front um there's been a time where somebody told me like i was an onion of a man 
And but that wasn't <laughs> Yeah, it was a wild statement, cuz. <laughs> bugged out. That's a little bugged out, but I hear it. I hear it. And so like but that wasn't coming off in my art for a long, long time. Like, it just wasn't. It it was it was really it was really kind of bland and um you really you really brought a kind of change in my perspective and a and a change in um just really becoming a better artist like um so yeah i'm for 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 me you you really kind of set forth like a foundational shift in a lot of the things that i did um because I, I just think that my art off top was, like I said, it, it was just really kind of up in front of your face and that's what it was. And that was what it was going to be. And that's, that's all there was to it. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't remember that conversation very clearly. I do remember having like, a, you know, chopping it up about that as, you know, at some point, but I, I don't remember being that blunt. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm glad that it, uh, that uh, you know, even though I was, it it, it you know, some message that that you, that you carry with me. Uh, but I mean, you know, that's like that's work work. Uh, people who have like things to say in their you know through their art rather than just you know people who are creating things that they just you know feel are, are beautiful. You know, like in the beginning, from my perspective anyway, often have that that, uh, that hurdle to get over. You know, since so this that initial speed bump of okay. You know, I have this thing to say, so I'm going to say it. Just like you would in any normal conversation. The problem is that people consuming your work don't necessarily have your frame of reference. And also, you know, like, uh, you know, I find that people need to be able to discover these things on their own. Because like, you know, uh, you know, especially when we're talking about things like 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 justice, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. know, for, you know, for our, you know, for our brothers and sisters. There's there's so much there's so much to uh, uh, to break down um, when you when you know, when you're when we're on that topic that for the uninitiated um, you know taking it taking it straight to uh, you know uh, reparations conversations or conversations about um, you know um, you know dismantling or defunding or whatever like these kind of conversations like they they can sound like you, you're starting from you're at like you know, 0.99 when a lot of people are at 0, 0.0, you know? And so they need to be able to discover these things on their own. Like, okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? And what does this mean? And it also gives, um, you know, it's like uh, it's like when you read a pay, you know, when you read like a research paper and, you know, you understand whatever somebody's points are, but in order to fully understand what their frame of reference was, their context was, you have to dig into the cited sources, you know, so that you can grow your own understanding of, you know, whatever topic that is. And it also, you know, raises your investment, you know, um, yeah. if you have to do some work, like if you give somebody something, you know, on a, you know, it's that old, it's that old axiom, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, yeah, teach a man to fish, right? Mm -hmm. So, because that's gonna pay, that's gonna pay more dividends than just simply like giving them the fish, you know? You need to be, people need to be able to discover these things on their own, formulate their own ideas, so that they so they actually stick to them, you know. Um, so um, so yeah, I mean, you know, this uh, you know, and I mean, also we grew up in a time where like that that nuance, I think, in our art and uh, you know, uh, just in you know, in the black community was you know not necessarily nuanced, just in general, you know, like the people we like uh, grew up on, and you know, from a music perspective, was like you know. Ta, like Talib Kweli and like Common and like uh, mm -hmm. Kanye. And if you listen to the stuff that came out when we were coming of age, I'd say that there's not very much nuance at all. So it's also something that like, you know, we, uh, that we grew up in and like, like, but as you like the, the work that is more focused on now and the work that's like more powerful now, I think you can, you can clearly see that nuance. So, you know, it's just one of those lessons that, that, uh, that a young artist has to learn. And, um, you know, uh, you had to, too. That's, you know, it's only right. Yeah. But, you know, that, um, but, you know, as you mature, those things change. And, um, you know, lucky, I've been lucky enough to, to, to watch that uh, with you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I feel like, yeah. I feel like when it, when you said the thing about, like, 
yay in common and stuff like that makes me want to go back and like listen to some of those records um even though i'm not listening to yay right now um mm. hilariously i'll talk about in a second how yay is a massive influence for for this record but um yeah it's it's i want it makes me want to go back and like listen to some of that music and, and kind of you know peer into it i think about a lot of our childhood with like gospel you know like kirk franklin fred hammond you know some of those different peoples um you know the like mary mary and and, and different people like that i mean the the art that i was so consistently surrounded by i mean you kind of have it with like the new nation project like there's a tiny bit of no i don't know if you'd say there's nuance there's storytelling yeah it's good storytelling you know but, but it's not like, I don't know. I mean, well, I don't know. I guess there is some nuance because because Kirk's like major kind of narrative is his own journey and how people are treating him. But it's also like Kirk Franklin versus the state of the world. So like there's this mm -hmm. metaphor of the state of the world and and how we need like we need to break this sacred and secular kind of divide that's that makes Christians not you know engage people's lives like they don't even live what jesus said to live so that's yeah. so so they need to break that barrier and and you're taking shots at like christian you're taking shots at kirk yet you know you're not even you're not even living out the gospel so i guess there is nuance in, in how kirk kind of set that up but that i mean kirk was an anomaly kirk still is an anomaly yeah, you know? and so you know, I the 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 mass majority of what I was consuming was like, you know, cannoli brothers and and, and ish like that. You know, <laughs> you are my joy. You know, man, that is that is uh, that's a throwback. Yeah. So, well, so uh, well, sorry to interrupt, but um, as you're saying this, I'm thinking about where nuance would have been in our upbringing because, like, I'm sure you talked about this, but but for those who don't know, uh, you know, we were not. Uh, really allowed to participate in any uh, of what was termed, uh, what was deemed secular, secular growing up, like at all. Um, so, we're, you know, basically everything we listened to was Christian, everything we watched was Christian, everything we went to was Christian. Uh, and, and that was that. And it was only in, um, you know, in our, uh, you know, later, later uh, formative years, you know, in, you know, in high school, where we were, you know, we had started to buck that trend and it wasn't even really like a thing that we were given permission to do, uh, at least not at the start. Yeah. Um, but um, but um, looking for the nuance and where, you know, the things that we, we um, uh, that we uh, were part of growing up, I can think about like the best, uh, best examples of like messages from the pulpit are, are very nuanced. You know, it's about, mm. you know, drawing um i mean you know generally speaking you're drawing from you know three four or five sources from the word right and yeah. um you know creating analogies that are you know supposed to be that are like you know that are supposed to give us um you know um you know signposts for you know direction we're headed today you know and uh in order to do that i say the best you know preachers and um you know preachers that we that we experience were you know very very adept and you know um, um, creative in the ways that they would take something that was like you know seemingly very straightforward in the Old Testament and making it apply to something that uh, you know that's going on like today right now yeah. you know um, so you know we had it um, but you you know it's something you had to look for totally totally and then like as a kid you know it's not like I had it's not like I had the mental processing power even to, you know, to to necessarily take in all those different things. But that's a that's a really good point, you know, especially because because I, I you know, for a time was aiming to plan a church, be a pastor. Mm -hmm. And and when my sermons, I remember like the first time because I used to preach at like the FCA meetings every week at the school. Now, like I wasn't preaching every week, but I would preach from time to time throughout a semester at school, was like Fellowship of Christian Athletes back in, in at school. And I led that for a while. And when I started telling stories in my sermons, people would hit me up, like leaders and stuff. They'd be like, you, you should like hang on to that. Like you should do that more. 
And and so like when my approach to my sermons became more like creatively infused, that's when like I think that's that's when a lot of a lot of like um my my growth as a communicator really began. And then it's just like, you know, connecting the dots eventually, like figuring out where else in art that sort of stuff can come come to be. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's also something to be said about how like we've got such a fast food creative environment right now mm -hmm. that like, Very like much so. yeah, we're not giving stuff space to develop. We're not giving stuff space to breathe and become something because like I don't think there's many projects that are like deep from the beginning. Like it's it it comes from some small seed, and then you have to water the seed and water the seed and tend to it and care for it and stuff. It's like COG came about over five years. Like mm -hmm. you know it you you we think about like masterpieces. Like you know I mean it might be hard. I know Kendrick doesn't like people saying his albums are classic albums because they haven't lived long enough. But I feel like Good Kid, Mad City has lo lived long enough to call it a classic album. Um, and, and that record, he was thinking about that record for like a decade before, you know, like mm -hmm. he was thinking about that record through his, his childhood. He knew while he was doing the Kendrick Lamar EP and all these other things of like, you know, all his mixtapes as a kid that he was going to make this album. But I guarantee you that Good Kid, Mad City, even if he had the title for it back in the day he didn't have the inner workings of it. Like mm -hmm. Dr. Dre coming on board and Top's influence and, you know, Soundwave and all these cats like coming into the mix of that were like probably helped to expand the vision of, of Good Kid to what it became. And, and I think that's, I think that's one of the issues that we have in our culture right now when it comes to art is that aside from like the Coles, the Kendricks, and I know you're not a big Cole fan, um, <laughs> but, and, and Cole, I think conceptually Cole is like Cole's concept space. Isn't the same as Kendrick's at all. I mean, I think for your eyes only was a good example of like mm -hmm. him storytelling more. Um, and I'm, I'm not the most astute J Cole, listener in the world but i just think like i don't think kod holds a candle to to pimp a butterfly in terms of conceptual storytelling um and so you know i think there's there's only but there's a select few you got the calls you got the kendricks you know i'm i'm trying to think of other cats who are like really tell who are really telling stories who are of the of the top tier but there's just a lot of like, I'm gonna make a hit. I'm gonna make a hit. I'm gonna make a hit, you know, rather than rather than like, let me like flesh out this idea to become something. And so, yeah, I think that's one of the I think that's one of the reasons why um, I think for me, even and, and even, you know, trying to keep up on Instagram or or even in the beginning, it's like you got classes. Right. And so it's like the the professor gives you three weeks to get this ish done but then you got 13 other things that you got to do for other classes and then i'm wrestling and then i'm like leading clubs i'm a ra like i'm doing all these things and so it's like how the heck do you think that i'm going to develop a project to be as deep as it needs to be um and i remember one of my professors saying to me like he was like he wanted some photo students that were just photo students. Like, yeah, that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if college is supposed to prepare you, prepare you for life, like think about. All right. So you, so you just laid out like, you know, the, 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 the problem of like, you know, somebody, you know, like an, an artist going to college, you know, the the you know, the reality is that, yeah, there's your art and then there's like the the 300 other things that are on your plate that you yeah. need to focus on as well and, and apply just as much of yourself to. But then take that and let, you know, 
put that into the real world, you know? I mean, like we are, we are expected to, you know, or it's, you know, we, we, we want to be able to keep up with everything that's going on on all the different social media platforms, keep up with everything that's going on in the world in general. And we're talking about, you know, I mean, just keeping up with news in the United States is, is troublesome enough at this, you know, in this present moment, not even mentioning like, you know, the world, right? Because there's so much going on in, you know, in, um, you know, in other parts of the world as well. So, you know, if you want to be a very well uh, rounded individual, it's good to have, a, a, you know, an understanding of what's going on in the world, uh, you know, in current events, right? But then, um, you know, I mean, you just have your day-to-day life. You need to be able to, you know, to, to eat three square meals or whatever, you know, keep, you know, keep healthy, make sure that your family's straight. You know, if you have kids, you have to take care of those kids. You need to be able to, you know, um, you know, have some leisure time that so you that you recharge. But then also, if you are an artist, you need to be able to apply some of that time to your work. Like that's yeah. a lot to juggle, yeah. you know. Um, and it's uh, you know, so it it unfortunately like it has led to I think the you know this uh, this issue of there is the expectation of what is um, you know what required in uh you know modern life is just there's so many things pulling at you you know to be able to engage with something over a long period of time and really focus on it is you know people a lot of people are hard pressed man they don't even have the luxury you know i mean you know if you you know if you if you're worried about you know making your ends meet you know if you're worried about about you know about keeping your house if you're worried about you know keeping your apartment you know keeping your job in this present moment you know how do you have the time to truly engage with, you know, with art or with society in general and not and not end up, you know, focused, you know, in your um in your in your own in your own world, in your own like immediate needs. It's tough. Yeah, that's real. It makes me think about, you know, as you said that and, and kind of push back on that idea from from what my professor had said. Um it makes me think about Andy Minio and he was talking about, I don't remember what I was listening to a long time ago that he was talking about this, but he's really talking about how like, um, he's talking about how going to class and doing these different things were, were like giving him touchstones to be inspired by so that he could make like have things that were getting, like he was getting inspiration from in order to make art like mm-hmm. to make his music. And so that that's one of the things that that's like, it makes me think about that is like, if you're not living, if you're not doing, if you're not rocking through, you know, I don't know, just, just you're not having things to pull from. You're, you're probably not going to have, you know, like depending on what your content is, but you might not have like the same, creative output or your 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 work's gonna change it's like Mm -hmm. it's like how people talk about like when artists start going on tour right Mm -hmm. how like all of a sudden their work starts diminishing in quality because they don't have nothing to talk about no more like their lives have changed so drastically from what they were before or they're on tour so much that they're not even having the things to pull from anymore in order to um in order to uh to have a creative have creative fuel like they're not Mm -hmm. my one of my mentors said this to me shortly before i moved to raleigh um was like he was he was talking to me i guess it it might not have been shortly before raleigh it might have been after and i'd come back to tennessee to go to class um but he was talking about this concept of like digging your well deep and he was talking about like pastors and stuff will get to this point where they're like their sermons are sucking they feel like dried up they don't have anything left and they feel like they lost their gifts Mm -hmm. and he was like it's not that they lost their gifts it's that their well ran dry and he, mm-hmm. and he started he started like breaking down like how a well is rated by like how many gallons or so per hour can fill into the well mm-hmm. 
but you have to be taking water out of the well at a rate that doesn't supersede what it already fills itself up in, or you're going to run a well dry. Exactly, exactly. And so he was like, you got to dig your well deep. You got to, he's like, so you need to keep watching movies. You need to keep, you know, watching, you know, anime. You need to keep listening to music. You need to keep going for walks, getting on your longboard, doing different things that fuel you up so you're digging your well deeper and deeper and deeper so that when you're having to pour out and he was really like he was talking about like seminary with like taking in different books and stuff like that as well like getting the knowledge and things like that that i needed and stuff so i was di so i dig my well deep enough so that when i needed to pour this out which is kind of what this is right now what durag thoughts is in part you know i'm pouring out what I've learned and taken in and consumed over these years. And, and so that you're not pouring out to others more than you're being poured into. Exactly. And so, um, that, that really makes me think about that in the space of artistry. Um, and in part, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, I do think there is some of that to be said of like, even though I was developing as an artist early on, but why some of my art wasn't as potent, you know, in the earlier years. Um, I think like, you know, projects like Amago, Amago was a good base in terms of like thinking about art experiences and things like that. I think the project conceptually, um, needed a lot more but you know it was my first project of that scale yeah. uh, so i have to I'm, i give myself grace in that and i and i and I'm, I'm grateful for what it taught me but i think a lot of like i think i think a lot of the um the hard the hard spaces for me in in terms of like growing a deeper space of my artistry was it really struggled because I was doing too much. <laughs> like I was doing way too much, you know, in, in college at times, like there was a point where I called Krista, our sister, one of our mm -hmm. sisters. Um, and this was before the school year started. And I was, I was, uh, an RA, I was, a captain on the wrestling team. I was starting. I was uh, taking whatever class load I was taking. I um, I was the vice president of SGA. I was the president of FCA, which had the weekly meeting. Um, I was leading a Bible study, uh, and then I was involved in my church in some capacity. And I was the Mac Lab manager, which means I had to like clean the Mac Lab as a work study. So I had like. So I was getting paid for SGA, I was getting paid for RA, and I was getting paid for the Mac Lab attendant thing. So I was getting I was getting three paychecks, right? And then I was doing all this other stuff. And I was, I was like, I'ma die <laughs> like if I do this. And Krista was like, yo, you need to like cut something out of your life. <laughs> and so I ended up cutting SGA vice president. I resigned. For, Cause we got reelected and, and I said, nah, I can't do this. Cause I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, I don't have the capacity. Um, and that, and that was the thing. It's like, I was trying to do so much that I wasn't giving myself space to become. And I think in a way, I guess now I'm looking back at it, I'm going to, you know, contradict myself from 20 seconds ago, but I do think that there was a space where that did give room for Amago to grow and develop because I I wasn't doing everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's art, art, art is, um, you know, I mean, the job of an artist is to take their life experiences and, you know, distill them into, you know, whatever, you know, their, their chosen medium is, right? So, of course, you know, the, you know, I mean, you're, you're you know, the, 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 you know, the good and the bad is going to be expressed in your work. So it makes sense that, you know, that, that, you know, even in a time when you were, uh, you know, stretched thin, it, you know, it helped develop your work. I mean, because it only makes sense, especially in that, 
you know, you're, you as an artist were developing as well. So, you know, that, that, you know, just all of that, um, you know, all of that experience, is, you know, uh, you know, so, I mean, you can always point to like, this helped me do this and this helped me do this. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's natural. Um, I mean, you know, it's like going back to your earlier point around like, uh, I, you know, like that, right? Like, you know, the kid is, you know, 20 something years of life experience distilled into an album that's what, like 15, 16 tracks, something like that, right? Like that's, yeah. that's the, you know, that's the, um, you know, it's a, it's a, for, for those who are not, you know, uh, who do not like, have really any experience with like creative endeavors. It's, it, you know, it, uh, you know, they, you know, especially when we're talking about music, um, you know, people's expectation is that, you know, you just be able to pump out, you know, pump stuff out, pump stuff out, and that's, you know, and that's that. But, you know, especially if you, if the, you know, the thing that you're, you know, um, you know, whatever you're doing is personal, um, and you don't have like a massive team behind you, there's no way that you're going to be able to, sustain that type of um you know creative cycle um you know that's where you're like dropping something every six months and so on and so forth uh you know um reasonable you know if, if the you know especially when you're talking about the artists that like the whole their whole um their whole uh appeal is the depth in their work if the, if the appeal is the depth then you have to let people live and you know and uh you know and uh you know get re you know just like watch different things like live different experiences read different things so on and so forth and give them time to digest that in order for them to even be able to produce the thing that you want them to produce in the first place you know um yeah so you know and then also speaking about imago just change subjects a little bit you know i mean it's a it's a, you know it's a, like you know it's your, it's your first work of that of that of that scale you know the you know any artist's first work of that scale is not the thing that they want people to point to as their like the thing in their career like you know uh at least hopefully right yeah like uh you know you want the opportunity to be able to do bigger and better things than, than, than that you know but also i think that you were you know in the process of discovering your perspective you know um, at least the, the, you know, the difference in perspective of, you know, that project and this project is, you know, you, you know, there was, uh, you know, you wanted to be able to tell your own story, but also facilitate, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, people telling their own stories as well, um, you know, be like, a, you know, uh, uh, within a multitude of voices, you know, yeah, uh, you know, this is this, but the, the concentration of the work that you know, the, uh, you know, forthcoming work is, it's very personal. It's not really about, I mean, sure, there are other people's stories and other, other, other timelines going on within the work, but it's, it's about you, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, this is like, I think that, I think that that project was, uh, that project, the Imago, was like a precursor to this and that you were trying to, you know, tell, tell, you know, uh, your own story, but, um, you know, I think that you needed to have permission or at least you needed to learn, you need to be able to, to, to discover that it's okay to tell your story and that's it rather than, you know, a multitude of other people's stories as well, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, um, and, um, you know, that's, that, that, that takes time and it takes maturity in order to, you know, maturity in, in, in you know, in, in oneself, but also in their, uh, in their, you know, in their art to be able to feel comfortable doing something like that. Yeah, and I think a lot of that, that period of time, I mean, I talked to Krista about this a little bit too. It's just like, um, that period of my life was such a becoming phase. Like, I mean, because you you know this, like, which, you know, hilariously, if, <laughs> when, when you go back to, to to what you just said about like not necessarily wanting your first work to be the thing that everyone points at. Um, one, it makes at first it made me think about Nas's Elmatic, and then two, it made me think about my work. My skin is not a threat <laughs> because that's my highest selling print ever. You know, it's 
it's the thing that has gotten the most eh, i mean it's gotten the most play in terms of how like people paying for it but it's not necessarily the work that like has gotten the most likes or the most shares or hilariously the, the stuff that's gotten the most shares of, of what I talk about is stuff that I talk about that has to deal with race that has no photographic artwork so associated with it. It's just like the artwork of of how I know how to put words together to communicate something that needs to be said mm. and, and heard. Um, which is the power is a part of the power of City of God. So we'll see how people respond to that. Um, mm. But I think I was in such a, a space of becoming, right? Where I didn't, I wasn't at my skin is not a threat yet, right? Like that didn't come, that didn't come until like a year after Imago. Um, Cause well, really two years because like there was an initial Imago, but then I said my senior exhibition is gonna be Imago, you know, 2015 MMXV like it's going to be the bigger scale where it's it it adds in different like it adds in a bigger element and um that was my initial plan um but then like as time progressed in that season I was really I was really coming into this awakening space of like who I was as a black person like because Trayvon was a big turning point for me. And I was experiencing a lot of racism at school, a lot of racism in in every avenue of life. I don't care if it was church, if it was the wrestling team, if it was um, people I was on staff with on the RA staff, um, if it was, you know, people I was around in friendships or people I was around in, um, you know, leadership through, through FCA, like, it didn't matter. There were there was racism happening. I mean, I was in in small town Tennessee. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's going to happen out there. Exactly, it's going to be everywhere. And so, yeah. I was really coming into this awakening period where I was like, I knew I because I, I mean, you know what it's like growing up. Like, you can point to plenty of stuff that is racist, but you don't have the terminology that people have scholarly. Like the scholarly community has created to t to describe what this feeling is, yeah. and, and so I didn't know what white fragility was or white rage was or you know any of these other concepts. I didn't I didn't know about how to like mark what that trauma that that was creating was. I just knew it was happening, and so I would like I was experiencing stuff and growing in my knowledge and and growing in my space of becoming and, you know, even like, you know, it was, it was that, it was the year after I graduated, the fall after I graduated, that you gave me ta Coats Between the World and Me for my birthday. And like, that was a, with that book being so focused upon like, the, the becoming of, you know, ta son, mm -hmm. it was like, it was it was a, a a very timely book for my life at that point because i i wasn't at the point where i knew i wanted to make art to challenge perspectives and give hope to the marginalized and oppressed like i knew that my stuff like because at first my stuff was like just like jesus 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 from the sense of here's a i mean i had a project that was like five images that were like from genesis or something like it was very like this is, I'm going to tell this story about Jesus or, or it was like, I wanted to be a fashion photographer. And then I felt like when I started trying to shoot some fashion type stuff, I'm like, this ish feels empty. Like mm -hmm. this doesn't feel like it has any substance to it. And I can't live like that. Like I can't make work like that. And so, you know, it's like, I could make some stuff with some cool clothes, but like this cool clothes has to like point to something like it, we could we could make some cool clothes and point to like the Black Panther Party or something. It's like I need something else. And so <laughs> it's like I couldn't I couldn't do it. Like I remember like one of my professors said, you know, try try a fashion project. And I did. And I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> like I just didn't because it didn't inspire me. It was like hard to sit behind the camera. It was hard to direct people because I just I didn't know what to do with it. And so there was this process of like getting to make art to challenge perspectives and give hope to the marginalized and oppressed. And when I got there, it was like, I remember I had this conversation with you like leading in the seminary. 
I was like, before, I guess, I don't know if I was directly like going into it at that point, but it was sometime before, like in the year gap between getting kicked out of Canada and going back to Tennessee and not knowing what my next step was. And in that space of time, I was really like, okay, I, I know what I want to be as an artist, but I don't have any work that displays that. And, and so like, I, I wanted to like redo my website because I didn't want any of what I had yeah. shot at that point. Yeah, I remember that. And I just had, but I had nothing. And then I made my skin is not a threat. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is the direction. But then I was in seminary. So there was only so much that I could do. Like, I, I, I like made this work and I could like, it was like I could throw a dart, but it's not like you could throw a hundred darts at once. And so, mm -hmm. and I, and I had like these, these stall periods between when I could throw the next dart. And so I was, you know, I would, I would have a project like that, or I'd have a project like still we speak, or, you know, I would, I would have little instances and like little flickers of like, Hey, Trevor, this is the thing all the while, like city of God is like coming into it's, it's developing, it's, it's being birthed in this time, but it, it, it took a long time. And so that, that time was really like this, this, this big moment for me to really awaken to, okay, who you want to be as an artist. And then like, okay, now I need to make the work to back that up. But it, it took a while. I mean, I was, I guess I was 24. I was 24 by the time, or it was, it was right before I was 24. I was 23 when I dropped my skin is not a threat. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's five years ago, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, or it technically will be five years in, 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 September. in September, but um, yeah, it was five years ago. I guess the, by the time people hear this will be five years ago, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it was a while ago when I did that. Um, and and so like it's it's just taken it's just taken a process to get here um which has been dope but it 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 just speaks to the reality that like there's some stuff out there that like will taste good and it only takes you 25 minutes to make it but there's mm -hmm. some ish that's got to sit in the smoker for like days exactly know? and it's and like there's like, nothing wrong with that you know i mean we need we need both but you know, but it's uh, for the people who, who, uh, who the thing that, that people go to and people, the thing that people are drawn to is that death. Then yeah, man, I mean, you know, you just have to be okay with it. Yeah, it's gonna take me five, six years to do this. You know, it's gonna take me, you know, it might take a decade, you know, but that's, that's okay, you know, because, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the, there'll be all of that there. You know I mean, generally speaking, I find, you know, the work that 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 takes that long to create, you know, it takes it takes that longer and longer to even break it down. You know, like we always want the new thing. We always want the next thing. But, you know, think about those things that really, you know, that really sit with you. But you still that you still got a rotation that you still, you know, uh, think about and still really apply to your life like that, that those are the things that generally speaking, take the longest to to create. You know, um, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, but the things that, you know, the 10 minute, 15 minute things like those are great in the moment. And we need those things, too. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's balance. You know, we need balance. Yeah. I mean, it's like when you said that, it made me think about how um, it was like maybe it might have been a year and a half ago where you texted. I don't know if it was the fam group chat or if it was like just one with like me you and krista or something but it, you texted some group that included me and krista and you know our family in some capacity and you said like i don't know if y'all knew this but the mad and good kid cat mad city stands for made me an angel and angel does mm -hmm. and um and i and i knew that because i li had listened to dissect podcasts Mm -hmm. and then break down that stuff i think that's where i got it from yeah and then like 
Krista had known from something else because she a surgeon and Smish got. <laughs> you know? I don't think that has anything to do with it, but I hear, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, sometimes, I mean, I just think Krista got I mean, a lot. It was right there, you know. It was right there, but because he says it, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, but you know, it's just like just didn't connect it, you know. But uh, I mean, you know, that's 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 what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I mean, I still if there's there's music that I still listen to. That I've been listening to for it's been in rotation probably ten years at this point, and um, you know that are older than that, but like that I'm still getting little lines and little like you know bits of understanding. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, I mean that's the beauty that's the beauty of art, you know that that you know, the, the stuff that I think is the most worthwhile generally grows with you, you know, um, and. Uh, you know, you get, you know, gain different understandings or different phrases. You know, this 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 thing can be read this way, you know, while you're at this age and you have these responsibilities. But then 10 years later, when your life has changed, you know, pretty dramatically, these like that same line can mean something so much, so much more different, you know, but still so much more worth or some, so, but still worthwhile, you know. Um, that's, a, you know that's a beautiful thing. It's the beauty of the, you know, the human experience, you know, there's just so many ways to look at, you know, so many ways, so many different lenses to look at things. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I've chosen like throughout this season of Durag thoughts, like not to break down the album. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I've, I've chosen not to do like a dissect podcast of my own record because I yeah, want, I, mean, I want people to live with it. And you know, dude, I think people, I think it will be really interesting to to see what people get from it from their own perspectives you know what i mean because there's so much that there's so much life experience in the record that you know there's there are going to be things that people are going to be able to relate to but relate in such a so much more different way than you would have ever you know been able to imagine you know um and uh you know it's a uh, one of the beauties of art um, from my perspective is, uh, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, different perspectives and different, uh, um, you know, ways things can be, can be interpreted, you know? Um, so, you know, I mean, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the job of the artist to make the work and it's the job of the, you know, the viewer, uh, you know, the, the viewer of the art or the listener of the art to, you know, to, to, uh, to uh be able to read you know get, like figure out what it means and and you know perhaps figure out things that that it means that like the artist didn't intend you know there's tons of there's tons of things that like you know um tons of different works tons of movies i can think of that like the way that gen the general public interprets it is not necessarily what the artist intended at the time or even that the artist may not have explicitly intended anything. And yet the, you know, what, what the viewer has, uh, you know, applied, you know, to, you know, whatever, you know, um, you know, whatever the, 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 uh, the purpose of the film was is, you know, just something completely different than they could have imagined. And that's totally fine. You know, with all, you know, art is supposed to, uh, to, um, you know, you just never know what the life of a, of a work will be once you release it. Yeah. Yeah. I also have to note that you're the biggest film buff that I know. Um, <laughs> and that's been, that's been super helpful with this project because like, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't really have anyone else. I got, I've got a homie who's, who's a um, cinematographer uh, and mm -hmm. DP, a director um shout out alan baker baker for the the vision and stuff and help that he's given given me to kind of like hone in on some ideas and things like that yeah. in this yeah. um but you know alan alan's got a wife and kids in a in a full-time you know gig doing s cinematography stuff like filmmaking mm -hmm. and stuff and so mm -hmm. you know like and and me and alan met when i was in raleigh so it's there's a different, there's a different level of like time and, and commitment and stuff like that 
that that can exist in that space in comparison to my blood brother you know yeah and so um but but you've you've been so much of a of a help in in kind of crafting what what it took to kind of create the vision so um when i think about cog um one kind of on your point of like stuff having different lives to it than you expect i'm 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 really interested in seeing how that plays out for people because i think it's going to hit a lot of people in different ways um and people who like like black folks who grew up like us it's gonna hit in a certain way because like you know they're they're gonna have experienced certain things like this black folks who are going to seminaries that are majority white and like if people know about seminaries and racist history and those black people weren't allowed in seminaries for a long time and so mm-hmm. even the seminary that i went to the technically the seminary was very different from the university that now owns it for a long time but the mm-hmm. school that now owns the seminary that i that i graduated from you know where my degree is like right over there um the school didn't integrate until like the late 60s like you know and so and so that ish was a part of that school too so like black folks weren't like black folks who who were like who experienced some of those things like you know homies like mine of like like calvin who you know who went to that seminary like people who are in seminary right now and experiencing, you know, different, you know, setups of racism and things like that, they're going to experience it a certain way. People who had experiences like mine in college are going to experience it a certain way. Um, people who, um, I, I don't, I don't know that you could just say people who wrestle cause I don't think wrestling is a big theme in my record, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's, I think, you know, people who view my stuff from a space of like, a Christian influence are going to view it some some way. People who view my stuff from just the film making standpoint are going to view it a certain way. Um, you know, I think even the influences that someone like Tay brings in, in the way that he has scored and crafted and produced this this the soundscape. Like Tay's background is a little bit different, and his to say the least. Yeah. Shout out to Tay Sean. Yeah, and so like Tay's Tay's had a different upbringing than us, and uh, than an upbringing than me, and he's also had different musical influences than me, and so there's going to be aspects of music that speak to people different, um, and it might be a coming of age and awakening record for a lot of people. Um, I mean, there's there's probably there's probably records in this you know this series and this project and this film that like when Tay had to like listen to him over and over, he probably had some like questions that he started asking about stuff. Mm-hmm. And and so I'm really interested in seeing how how that plays out. But kind of going back to the beginning, when I got out of uh, college and I was in that in-between space where I got kicked out of Canada, came back to Tennessee, I was working at a church in Tennessee, all these things. Um, I decided, well, I've done spoken word poetry for all these years in in smaller scapes like i've done it in church i've done it at school open mics i've done it you know just tiny spaces where i had done these things and i decided okay i kind of want to just see like what happens if i was to do this like if i was to spend some more time on this and so i decided all right i'm gonna make I, i thought i was gonna make three p's that was my plan and I decided I was going to make one that was called College Days and it was going to be like a five track EP and it was going to go freshman year. And there was like a theme to each thing. It was like freshman year was like fronting, sophomore year was something else, junior year was something else, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And then I had two senior years because I red shirted. Um, and then I was going to have The Return of the Kid, which is what the working title was before it became City of God, which I kind of. I knew for a long time the return of the kid was a working title um and then i was gonna do something else that i think was like something about like blackness or something but i just didn't i didn't have um a a honed in kind of thing on that hold on one of my one of my lights 
one of my lights just flickered. Okay, anyways, so back to, <laughs> it just like powered down and then yeah, came, came right back. Yeah, and I'm like, I, it's probably because I have a piece of tape on one side of it because the fan was kind of loud. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been going for a minute, so I thought it was good. I didn't think it was going to have a problem with it, but... Well, it's back now, so we'll see how long it rocks. Yeah, I'll pull the tape off if I need to. But anyways, yeah. um, so, yeah, so I thought, okay, I'm going to do that. And then I remember I, I'd, written, I'd written, like, Wasted Words first, which became Wasted Way. Um because that's that was something that was like visceral that I was feeling in that time and the, the way those friendships were playing out and and how how I was rocking through like the lack of just the, the isolation and loneliness. And then I just I kept writing and I kept writing, and I kept writing over the years. And it just like I thought I was going to I thought I was going to have a producer, um, you know, set up at that point. I had talked to a friend and thought I was okay, okay, I'm gonna knock this out. And then I didn't, and then I kept writing, kept writing. The next thing you know, I remember talking to you, I was like, I've written like 12 tracks. So I guess I'm writing an album. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, like, I guess that that's where we're at. Like it wasn't the plan yeah. initially at all. Yeah. Um, and I And I don't remember if it was still City of God at this point, but I remember like, so, so one, like there was already like, okay, I had a seed of something that I just kept watering through writing and realized there was a larger narrative to tell here because I was going through so much and I needed to process it somehow. Um, like I was enduring so much in that time period and it was a real, I mean, it's a, it's a coming of age project. It's a coming of age series. It's a coming of age record. Um, and so I remember the big turning point in terms of development was when I was moving downtown in Raleigh, which would have been like 2017, I think. Yeah, 2017. And it was like it's like mid year 2017. And I was I had found Dissect podcast and shout out Dissect. And I started listening to the sections or the, the seasons that they had on um, on Good Kid Mad City slash The Pimple Butterfly and uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. And My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is my favorite record of, of all time um, at this point, I think. And so um, I, I started hearing like Cole Kushner lay out the depth of why Ye chose this tone on the piano for Runaway. And why can't like what the narrative Kendrick was telling here and what the underlying narrative was with, you know, Shireen or Lucy or, um, you know, how my beautiful dark twisted fantasy was all about the Taylor Swift moment. And I didn't even know that. I just thought, thought the songs banged and like all these different pieces. Right. And I remember I called you up. And I and I had like written basically the whole city of God at this point. And I called you up and I was like, dog, I don't think my record's deep enough. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so shallow. Cut. I, I was like, dang, I really started like hearing all these dudes, like different layers to what they were creating in these projects. And I was like, yo, like this is so much deeper than anything I created. And then we started having conversations about, I was like, I feel like maybe I need to have like an adversary or I was like, I was like. Oh yeah, that's right. I, yeah, yeah, on the loose and tip. Yeah, I was like, maybe I should have some sort of adversary or something like that. And you were like, yeah, I wouldn't force something. And we were, we were trying to play out like what could potentially come about and then I don't remember if it was called City of God at this point. I don't think it was. It, it wasn't. I don't remember what it was called before, but it, it was. It, so before it was the Return of the Kid, and well, I, I never even heard that title before, so I'm not sure what it, what I do with that. It's before City of God. Yeah, I mean, might have just called it the album. Yeah, I mean, it was like Return of the Kid, Coming a City, Building. Like there, 
I remember when the city theme kind of came into play. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it was somewhere within that space of time, like mm -hmm. th this whole concept. And I really was like, like after we had talked and I was thinking like, do I need an adversary? Do I need like some underlying narrative? <clears throat> and then like, I started thinking I'm, I'm, I'm just building, like I'm becoming who I am. Like this is the building blocks of who I'm becoming. And so I remember, I remember going back to, like I had taken a week of vacation cause I, I would always suck at taking all my vacation time. And I took a week of vacation and it was just going to be a staycation. And I went to basically every day to the same coffee shop in, in Raleigh, shout out Jubala. Um, and I went to Jubala and I posted up in that coffee shop and sat on them stools with my little vanilla latte and I, and I, oh, and they're bacon, egg and cheese biscuits, which are crazy. And so <laughs> I, I know you don't eat that swine, but that Jubala swine different, cause that Jubala <laughs> swine. If, if you say so. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, <laughs> but I, I rewrote most of the record. Like I didn't change, I didn't change the bare bones of the tracks, but I like rewrote certain tracks and there were certain tracks. I just like rewrote the whole thing. And I really embedded this theme of like building a city more so, uh, because it wasn't like, that's, I, that's where I really felt like the building blocks of this thing really sat in. Cause I think there was one edge where I was going to try to force something. Cause I realized that their stuff was way deeper than mine. <laughs> um, and then there was the other edge of like, but what is this already saying? And like, what can you press deeper into rather than trying to force this thing to be something that it's not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean that, that space was so much of a, of a big turning point. Um, and a, and, a, and a changing point in that that time of the record, like, I don't know, like, like, what do you remember about that time? Well, yeah, I definitely remember the, the uh, yeah, the conversation around the depth of the record. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, this is before the music, like was a, you know, before before Tayshaun was on the project. Um, you know, I mean, it was a completely different you were, it was a completely was in a, a completely different space, um, you know. A lot of the themes and all of that, you know, were were still very much, uh, you know, in their infancy. If they were even, if they were even being talked about, um, and um, you know, it was just, uh, you know, I mean, this is. We were having conversations about, you know, uh, you know what was what what you know what was being, um, you know, spoken about on the podcast. But then also started having conversations about other other albums and other artists, and looking into like uh, you know um, you know what ways that they tackle similar subject matter, ways that they um, you know uh, artists who are more along the lines of spoken word, like uh, you know like uh, brother Bill Scott Heron and like the last poets and all of that. We're having conversations about them. You know those are those are, are poets who. You know, their their um, you know, uh, at least in the you know in their like most mass uh, mass produced uh, you know or mat like the stuff that has the most uh, exposure to the masses. You know, their poetry is, is very much paired with music. And so, what lessons you can learn from those artists and things of that nature? You know, it was just like um, you know, it was like a. You know, I mean, I, I think that in that period, the record became like a, a, a record, you know, rather than like, uh, you know, a collection of spoken word. You know, it was like, uh, you know, this is that, that is what that's the period that kicked off the, you know, uh, you know, where we ended up today, where, you know, the music is is as important to, you know, and in the, you know, the, the um, you know, the visual aspect of it is as important as the words themselves. They, you know, they can almost be, you know, uh, their own independent projects. And so, you know, what those, because of like those layers, you know, people, you know, there's, there, they're going to be all types of interpretations and, uh, 
you know, um, uh, you know, things that people really are drawn to, um, you know, that um, it's going to be hard to predict. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, it's a, it was a, you know, an artist journey, you know, like, um, you know, the, it, it just goes to show from my perspective that like, you know, I mean, I think like at the time, if you would have been, if you would have told your, you know, your younger self, you know, yourself from 2017, that it would be three more years before the album came out, like you would be horrified, you know, uh, by the amount of time that, you know, that it was going to take. And yet, I would say that every, you know, that, that, that all of that time was worth it. Because, you know, like you said, this is the, this is something that like, you know, I, I was talking about this, uh, you know, something similar with a friend of mine, uh, not too long ago. You know, this is like, this is like one of those things where this is like a booyah base, you know, you have to like, you know, the, all of these, all of these, uh, in different ingredients are in the pot, in the stew pot. But if without the without the time to simmer, you know, without the many hours given to simmer, the the what it, it what it was in the beginning and what it is after that period of time, is, it couldn't be more different, you know. Yeah. Um. And uh, that's important. That's important. You know. I mean, it's it's not it's not something that that uh, you know we necessarily emphasize in you know in our in our society at the moment but you know like sometimes things take time and um you know this is i think that can very much be seen in you know the the uh the, you know the uh creation process of the album yeah you're right about if i would have told myself three years ago it's gonna take three more years and they gotta be pissed <laughs> yeah i know i, I can i can hear I can almost hear the you know the reaction right now, you know. But it's if every every single one of those days I think was worth it, you know. The project, uh, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, you know the at least my my understanding of art is that like at the end of the day, there's going to be going to look back and you know say, oh, I could have fixed this and this could have been better and so on and so forth for the rest of your life. But you know, I think that uh, you know given uh, you know. Uh, a three year earlier release, you know, you were looking at it at that work where, where it was today, um, you know, where it was at that time today, you know, there would be a lot that you would want to change. And, um, you know, this, you know, it's that, that I think that happens a lot with, you know, different works because people are, you know, at the end of the day, like a lot of people, there's a people's livings, you know, and, um, you know, in order to, in order to pay the bills, you gotta put you gotta put work out sometimes, even if it's not ready. Yeah. Um. And uh, you know, that's to the detriment of the work and to the detriment of your your own appreciation of the work. So, you know, uh, like yeah, I mean, you know, it may not have been necessarily ideal the amount of time that you know it would take from then to now to to, to put the album together, but I would say that it's well worth it. It's a good trade off. Yeah, I think one of the big things, too, is like, because even a year ago, if you would have told me it was going to take another year, nigga, I'd be pissed. Like, I I, I was, I, I mean, you had to talk me down from some of those clips of like, I was just like, I wanted stuff to be moving faster. Um, mm -hmm. And, but I was also, I mean, I was still in tension of like, am I going to make this of, you know, a series? Am I going to make this like... Am I going to make this a visual album? Am I going to make this, uh, you know, you know, as it's releasing like this, it's releasing as a YouTube series, um, you know, this this kind of short, in a way, a short film series. Like, am I going to actually do all that? Because I knew it's what I wanted, but I also didn't know if I had the personnel and I knew I wasn't going to be able to, like, throw a bunch of money at it because I worked at a church and, you know, didn't I was gonna just have to ask favors from my homies, um, which ended up working out pretty well. But um, I remember I went to I went to Cali last year to shoot a wedding for one of my my closest friends in high school. Um, shout out Connor Bennett, and and I went out to go and shoot Connor and Stacy's wedding right. And I also took a year or a week of a vacation or a week and a half or something. Um, 
And then, and cause I had to go out to that Southern California area anyway for a work conference thing. And so I just extended some time um, and stayed out there in LA and San Diego in that area. Um, and, and when I went out there, um, I'm trying to think of what the heck, what the heck did LA have to do with this? I totally lost my train of thought. LA city of God, the creation process. I don't know. Um, sheesh. I don't know. Okay. So back to stuff like, like, you know, wanting this process to, to speed up. Oh, that's what it was. So back to LA. Sorry. I remember everybody. Um, I went and got coffee with a cat. Well, actually I got tea. I got tea with a cat named William Matthews. William had coffee in a cup. No, we both had tea. The reason I thought coffee is because this lady um, stuck her or or like pull or this dude pulled his pull a coffee out of a trash can in L.A. and then drank it all nonchalantly. And then he started choking on it. And it was real bugged out, like in Hollywood. Yeah, that's uh, that's real. Yeah. It also sounds like Hollywood. Though. Yeah. And then and then William told me this story about how a friend of his um or someone or no this i tweeted about it and then this girl uh tweeted back at us and she said that like some lady walked up to her in in hollywood and stuck her fingers in her coffee and said it's cold and so she said i handed her what was formerly my coffee was now her coffee <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um and so but anyways so william and i were talking and i was like yeah man i got this project i'm working on i want it to be a visual album i'm not sure like i got friends but i don't know like i'm not, it's asking them a lot to put to, to help me put together a 12 track you know like visual album like visual series and he was like sounds to me like you got everybody you need just do it and he just like nonchalantly was just like, just do it. And I'm like, nigga, and he's just, just do it. And it just kind of changed stuff for me, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I was like, all right, bet. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do it. Um, but then, so, so I had that, but then I also, so well, like this, this will come kind of later in the project, but um, my boy Matthew died of, of leukemia two years ago in 2018 and the last time i saw matthew um i got i had dinner with with him and his wife Brittany, who y'all have, well, have already met if you've if you've kept up with the whole durag thoughts season two series so far through journeying through the series cog um and matthew like this is the night that matthew told me that he had leukemia i didn't know this was coming at all um or that he probably had leukemia um and matthew was doing everything that he possibly could to try to get this series off the ground um or to get this this project you know to come into fruition because he he believed in me a lot um and so like the mic that's behind me aaron from your perspective you can't see it but within the shot like there's there's a shelf that has like the book of matthew because it says matthew on it and then the mic that matthew gave me to to do like demos and stuff on he tried to give it to me that night but i had already i was using a mic from the church but after he died i i I asked if I could grab it, if I could get it. Um, and Brittany brought it to me. Um, and then a pair of headphones that he had given me to be able to monitor my audio and stuff. Um, and so I, like Matthew, when I told him that, he was like, when are you trying to get the project out? And I'm like, I'm thinking by like August. Um, and he said, 
like cool that gives me a goal to live till and so you know then he ended up he ended up dying like it was like a month ish later from that point it was it was not that much time at all it was it was within the next like month and a half um and i felt like i had placed an immense pressure on myself from that point forward that like that project like once i was starting cog like i needed it to come out like as soon as possible because i had promised matthew that i was going to get this thing out and i was going to give him this goal to live towards um and and then it was just like delay after delay after delay after delay which all in all was helping the project to become better but to me i was like i had put this pressure on myself i don't know if it was because i didn't want to feel like i failed my friend or what but i was there was some sort of space where like you know you aaron had to talk me down from some cliffs in terms of no this thing needs to come out and you're like cuh if the thing comes out two months from now or now and you spent five years on it, don't you think like it's just OK, <laughs> like to just take the extra two months? And like some of those conversations really brought me down to earth to like, recognize that it. it's like, yo, sometimes you got to let stuff breathe. Um, and I think what I really had to come to recognize is like to honor Matthew with this record, who this this project is dedicated to Matthew. It's like is to do the best job I could possibly do. It's not to hold on to it and pull a Kanye with, you know, the life of Pablo and and change the mixes every three days on title. But, <laughs> you know, it's it's to do the best work that I can do and try to get it out. And then once it's out, like take my hands off the steering wheel and watch how it affects people's lives. So, um, yeah, it there, there was definitely that space where it's like, like you said, stuff had to simmer, you know, the ingredients were together, but stuff had to simmer and take the ample amount of time that it needed to, to be able to become everything that it needs to become. Um, and for me, it's like, I mean, I think about so many college projects and things like that. I always had too big of a vision in comparison to the time frame. Like I don't ha I don't have that gene where I don't have some gene where I can like look at the time frame and make a determining assumption upon okay, so I've I have this much time to do things and I have like like this is the this is the concept that I'm going to think of within that space. Because when I think of the concept that I think is scaled down, it's actually still scaled 3 times too big. And so um, I don't have at this point in my, my career, like anyone to kind of bring me down to earth to be like, Hey, like, if you really want this to come out in this amount of time, you don't really like, you're thinking too big still. Um, and, and, or like, you're going to need this many more people on a team to be able to execute this. And so, I don't know, there were so many pressures on myself in that, but I think like, I guess the moral of the story within this space is really like, you got to give yourself time to if you're trying to make a project that's deep, that's like that really has depth to it, that really has, um, you know, layers that it's going to take, like you said, Aaron, earlier, like the five to 10 years or, you know, to unpack it and still keep hearing different things and keep seeing different things in it in the new life that it gets to it because of all the time you took to create it, you've got to be able to let that stuff steep and stew and, and really become all that it's meant to become. Because if you rush it, you're, you're going to miss some things, but then sometimes you've spent enough time rocking at something in the before process, like, like it's the people who you know they've got those those ideas of like a handyman like come in comes in and like they charge you know some large amount of money to 
to fix something and then they come in and they smack it with a a, a wah, like a, a wrench in the right place and it starts working and they're like i just paid you all that money to smack that thing with the wrench and you're like no you paid me for the knowledge it took to know where to hit the wrench where it was supposed to go in order to fix the problem exactly and and so like there's times where like people you know like lecrae just dropped a record restoration which is it's kind of funny because there are some similarities between his project and mine mm. and and i have no communication with lecrae <laughs> about anything um mm -hmm. but cray's project he said so, in some spaces you could say that it's taken five years to really make it but it's really been like a two-year process which hilariously is kind of cog too <laughs> mm -hmm. um but and but Cray one has a million more people working on it. But like there was a track that Cray, I think within the time frame of the current revolution, you know, brought on by the murders of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and Maude Arbery, um, that I think Cray like wrote in like a day and recorded a video within the next week, and then it made the album. And so there are times where like cer certain things just like turn over, but it's because you've done all this work and all this steeping and all these different things. It's like, there's certain things where like, there's certain dishes where you gotta steep the thing or like, you know, do all these things to prepare something. But then there's also like this topping that really only took 10 minutes to make that's supposed to be like, an like it's also an element that's included in it but it just doesn't take as long to make that part, but it doesn't make it less of a part of the dish. It just makes it, it it, mat, it, it fits in because you knew you were going to that point and you could add this in there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think about that too, is like sometimes people can make hits in a moment or they can make, they can catch that scene or, you know, Denzel improv in the King Kong ain't got, on me like you know whole situation like that whole mm -hmm. space and it's because denzel had all this experience beforehand done all this work in the theaters and all that stuff before he ever got to that moment exactly exactly i mean you know that's 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 uh all of that experience and all of that knowledge comes with time you know so uh you know this album you know this project took, you know, some like five years to put together. The next one might not necessarily take that long, you know? Uh, and that doesn't mean that, it did, that, you know, it was rushed. It might just mean that, you know, the, the uh, what you were trying to say and what you were trying to, to um, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to show people didn't, you know, didn't, it just, it just took, it was a little bit more uh, concise. You know, but with something like this, it takes a long time and that's that's fine. You know, you just have to know, you know, um, or, you know, you just have to discover, you know, what the right amount of time for certain things are, you know, because even, you know, you're talking about, you know, talking about like the Andy man that comes in and, and makes the 10 minute, the 10 minute fix, you know, that took him 20 years to be able to discover it. that Andy man is still going to run into jobs that might take him a week too. you know what I mean? So. That's, uh, but you know, that's, um, you know, that's something that comes with, uh, with time and mastery, knowing how long things will reasonably take, um, and how long things should reasonably take or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. I mean, you know, I shot headshots for my little sister, our little sister, um, mm -hmm. you know, just yesterday and, you know, I ain't charge her nothing, but I don't, I like, she asked me how much I charge and I was like, you don't want to know that figure. <laughs> and, um, because I'm, I'm not going to charge my little sister for something like that. Um, and it's like, people might look at those photos and be like, dang, like you're a professional. It's like, yeah, I am. And it's like, how long did that take? And I was like, yeah, I mean, we shot it like an hour, you know? And, and it's like to get the shots that I wanted, like, it didn't take me long to get the shots. Like I could have got those those shots in half an hour and 10 minutes, 15 minutes. There's a there's a part of it where like you have to get to the point where someone's comfortable. But like, you know, if I'm charging like 400 bucks for a headshot session, you know, it's because like I have a degree 
I know what the heck I'm doing. My work speaks for itself, you know, mm -hmm. and and it's just like people have to to kind of kind of take that stuff in because, yeah, it's and yeah, it might take it, it might take a fraction of a second to push a shutter and for it to to, you know, open and close or if it's a mirrorless camera just to capture it. Um, but it it doesn't mean like it's it's what a person knew in the space of how to create that environment how to communicate with the subject subject and like how how to to photograph so i guess like to to kind of sum this this conversation up um and and what it what it kind of takes in like building the vision of what it took to make cog is like it took time it took it took time but it also took like um it took development it took me digging my well deep it took me having conversations with you and you know like you think about it it's like it took the growth of our relationship as brothers it took the growth of my relationship with my friends you know it took the growth of the relationships between family like you know it's because all I mean, having conversations and, and spending time together and getting advice like that's all growing a relationship. And then um, it took me. It consumed continuing to consume more art, um, even at times like there was a time in that that period of time where I was asking you for recommendations on films because I'm not really a film buff. I watch a lot more series than films, hence why COG is a series and not, you know, just straight up a film, because that's how my head thinks like. I want to show you a show because I feel like there's more character development in it. Um, but um, when it comes to that stuff, I was asking you for advice on different things to look at because I needed to to see better visuals because I wasn't I wasn't looking at cinematography and, and stuff like that off top because I, I didn't go to film school. I went to to a school that had a photo department, you know, and so it took to growing what my artistic influences were, um, gaining a more critical eye for film, for for shots, for um, for audio, for, you know, I mean, I had to learn about audio mixing, audio recording, um, how like, you know, like trying to trying to, you know, soundproof a space in some capacity. Um, I had to learn about all these different things. It took all these different relationships, all these different conversations over years and years and years and years to get to a point of creating this record. And and then like the development of me personally to be able to stand at certain points and to say this is what this is what this like is talking about or um I need to talk about this issue and let me break this issue down for you. And even since this record was finished writing ever since the series was finished writing, like I've grown more, but it took, it took all these points to get here. Um, and so, yeah, if I guess if there's someone listening to this, who, you know, wants to create is like looking to create some form of a project and want something with, with depth and stuff, it's like, don't be tricked by the quick, social media, Instagrammable, you know, let me show you how to get 10 million followers in a week type thing. Like you gotta, you got, if you're trying to make art, I think there's a big difference between art and content. Like not that content can't be art, but I don't really like the term content. I don't, I don't really like the idea of content creation. I like, I, I like the idea of art. Like I, I've put on my IG plenty of times, more art, less content. Um, like, don't be tricked if you're trying to make art and bodies of work by the content sphere It's like content, you know, has its place. You know, I, there are plenty of YouTube pages that I follow that I watch that are dropping stuff weekly. And it's more about, you know, volume and those things still add value to my lives, my life, but, and add value to plenty of people's lives. But the perspective that that I'm aiming for sits within the realm of like building a vision for an artistic, like full on depth filled project. And so it just takes time to develop stuff and allowing yourself to fail, allowing yourself to grow and allowing yourself to rewrite and 
take critique and having people in your life who will tell you that stuff sucks because Aaron is that person for me. I mean, <laughs> for real, for real, you are like, you are the person who like the reason that I show my art to you more than anybody else when I'm really trying to get an opinion on it is because I know that you're going to keep it a hundred with me. And you're like, you're going to straight up say, nah, that ain't it, bro. Like, uh, I think this needs more of this. Like, uh, you're kind of on the way, but that kind of, eh. It's not it. And and I just know that there's not a lot of people who do that and or who are afraid to do that. Or like you still have to build a relationship to get to a point where someone can like, you know, who, who is, who's going to be more willing to to kind of press into that. And so I guess trying to surround yourself with people who are going to tell you the truth and then to give yourself time to, to fail and grow. Because I know for me, like I'm not a quick turnover type person. Like I'm a person who, if you give me time to develop something and do a work and a project, like it's it's gonna be better. But if you're like, I have to be quick draw on everything, it's just not gonna work. Um, and I just, I think some of the better projects in the world do take some time. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why we don't see Kendrick dropping something right now, because even though his usual regimen was every two years, I just think he's at a point where he's, if he is going to drop another rap project, he's at a point where he's like, I, I'm a, I'm going to come back when the project fits, like when I can have everything tied together so that this thing can be right. I'm not just going to drop something to drop it because people want me to drop it. Yeah. When things are ready, they're ready. You know, I mean, you know, for people who, turn things around quick, that's a beautiful thing, you know? Uh, but for, for some people don't, and that's okay, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, we, you know, we, I, I hope that one day, uh, you know, that is more of a, a mass like opinion, you know? There's, you know, there's just some people we gotta check in every once in a while and see the new thing, you know? Uh, and some people, you know, gonna put things out immediately. And you know, that's uh, that's uh, the variety that uh, you know. So you know, we need that balance. So you know, uh, yeah, you know, I'm glad I could uh, uh, you know, contribute to the process. You know, in whatever ways that I do so. You know, and uh, yeah, man, we're gonna, we're gonna see how it goes. Yeah, we definitely gonna see how this thing rocks. I'm I'm interested in in what the I'm interested in the response and I'm interested in like what comes from this. Um, Cause mm -hmm. I think, I think the project's incredible and I, you know, I don't think it's something that I could have done alone. It, it took a lot of, it took a lot of hands. It's like, I did a lot of the work that it took to get this thing out by myself, but I like no one, no one is self-made. And I think exactly. people, everyone has exactly. to realize that it's like, yeah. Every, like people had to watch the videos and tell me if something was off. People had to look at my color grading and tell me if it was good. Like, you know, to point to different things to give that I might not have seen. I mean, last night I looked at a video that I had color graded and I looked at it one moment, I laid down for five minutes, looked back up at it and it looked completely different. And I was just like, my head is playing tricks on me. Like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. So yeah, it just takes time. It takes time to stew. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah. I. Well, say what you're gonna say. And it also takes a village, you know? Yeah. Uh, like you were saying, you know, it took however many people in your, in your own personal life, you know, people who you have uh, immediate relationships with, you know, to, to bring you to where you are. But then also, you know, it takes, uh, you know, the influences from other works to, you know, to uh, to, to also be able to, to put together something that is, uh, is worthwhile. And think about how much time it took for them and to create their work and for the people that they were working with and the people that was in their lives that were playing the same kind of roles for you to create whatever that was. So in a way, those people, those people on the periphery of all of those projects also will have a hand in your project. So that is a, that's a, that's a, you know, we're talking about, you know, a whole, I mean, we're talking about like a, probably a city's work of people who, I see what you did there. I see. You see. You see. You see where I'm going. 
you know? And uh, so, you know, it's like a, it's, it, it really does take, it really does take, um, you know, like we are, we are the culmination. I was looking at, so I saw some post the other day that was like, think about what it took for you to get here. So I just like, uh, they call it ancestral mathematics, you know? It took two parents for you to get here, it took four grandparents, it took, you know, eight great grandparents and so on and so forth until the number gets, you know, unfathomable by the amount of people who had to live and what their lives, you know, they had to live lives and get to the point where, you know, they created the person who created this person, who created this person, who created this person to get you here. You know, we're all a product of, um, you know, something that's so much bigger than ourselves. So it only makes sense that, you know, our, uh, you know, our creative endeavors would require that much, you know, those like that, that kind of multitude of people to put together and be, you know, to be right, you know? So, uh, it's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate your contributions to the project. I'm Absolutely. excited to see what's, what's going to go down from here on mm -hmm. out. Um, and appreciate your contributions to this podcast today. Cause I think, I think you, you always have a lot of insightful things to, to bring to the table. And I think, um, these listeners are going to benefit from this, um, who've, who've rocked with this today. So appreciate you for sure. Appreciate you, man. All right, dog. I'll talk to you later. Um, Word. we're going to wrap on this. Um, Word. and yeah, I'll, I'll close it out on the, the other end. Um, appreciate y'all catch y'all on the flip. Be easy. See y'all on the next episode of this series. Peace.